Just one minute. Okay, so a big, big welcome to everyone for today's Kryptonite session. This is season one, episode seven of the Kryptonite show, Success Dynamics of the Educators. And a big, big, warm good evening to everyone. And hola, bonjour, konnichiwa. If you're looking at watching our show from different parts of the world, zadravo, zadrasi, aloha, mabuhai. And a big namaste to our guest because our guest is from India and I also happen to belong to India. So we have with us Dr. Prateek Rajan Mungekar from Mumbai, Maharashtra in India. Now, uh, Dr. Prateek is a published author. He's a scientist. He's a researcher. Um, he's a social activist. He is a global educator. He's an international speaker. And he does a lot of things, which he will tell us about. But he's absolutely passionate about education and more so about education and skills education. Because, you know, the entire scenario is going to be changing in the coming times. But bef before I say something, let's hear it from the expert himself about what would be the education scene in the coming few years. I mean, now we're talking all about um, skills education, the future of education and the future of skills education by 2030, because we're talking about sustainable development goals. We're talking about sustainable education, sustainable learning. So Dr. Prateek, first of all, a big, big, big welcome to you on the show. Um, this is the first time you're coming on this platform. So I hope uh, we will have a wonderful time hearing from you and you sharing your expertise with us. So tell us about this topic because you're very passionate about it. So what do you think the future of education is going to look like and why skills? Why is there a focus now on skills? Over to you. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Alka Mahajan for inviting me, for having me here. And I will start with your question. Yes. In every way, in every way that educators entrepreneurs, investors, and governments act and plan. They are making implicit forecast about the future. So what might education look like in 2030? While no one can accurately predict the future, there are some signals which, depending on the direction and speed of progression, could have a profound impact on the size, shape, and structure of education, and indeed, on the very way uh, in which learning occurs. Education and learning is beautifully messy and diverse, and while there are no easy answers to its complexity, frameworks such as scenarios can help to simplify complexity by identifying, tracking, and structuring underlying influences and creating a common language to prompt discussion and ideas. So education, a $10 trillion industry by 2030. And see, I would like to discuss five scenarios on where innovation and technology could drive the future of learning and talent. So global education and training expenditure is set to reach at least $10 trillion by 2030 as population growth in developing market fuel a massive expansion and technology drives unprecedented reskilling and upskilling in developed economies so the next decade will see an additional 350 million post secondary graduates and nearly 800 million more uh, kindergarten to 12 standard graduates than today so wow. asia in asia other driving force or in any country Africa, let's say, are the driving force behind the expansion. The world needs to add 1.5 million teachers per year on average. 
approaching 100 million in total. So 50% teach in three kindergarten and primary post-secondary teaching will undergo the biggest expansion and change as the role of the teacher represents more of that of a mentor or coach than a, than a sage on the stage. So right, absolutely. First, first, I would like to tell you the first scenario is education as usual. So traditional education institutions remain, uh, remain the trusted source of learning and the most effective vehicle for jobs and prosperity, as you all know about the fact. Yeah. Higher education consolidates global talent platforms emerge and government remains the core source of funding around the world. So mm -hmm. in, 2030, uh, in 2030, the world economy is showing steady growth following a period of sluggish productivity in the previous 10 years. So demographic uh, trends in developed economies have damped labor supply. However, however, new cohorts of more educated workers from developing countries have now entered the global workforce and are contributing to improve productivity and global income equality. So the world skilled workforce has increased by approximately 20% since uh, 2020. And overall, developing countries will contribute most of the additional skilled workers in this period. So because of aging, however, the overall number of skilled workers in advanced economies is projected to decline by 2030. So the shift in global economic power away from established advanced economies towards emerging economies have closed global inequality between countries. However, the relative importance of inequality within countries has steadily increased. So in this environment, governments focus on improving their local situations and solving issues unique to their economic positions. So in advanced economies, providers who are the new uh, vocations, government funding focuses mainly on job companies and entire industry specific skills training to secure their human capital pipeline. So this, this, this was the first scenario. Now, second scenario is regional rising. So regional alliances dominate the competitive education landscape supported by strategic and political cooperation. So cooperative blended delivery and regional talent hubs, crossroad, uh, crossroad labor supply and demand to strengthen regions. So in 2030, world economies have become increasingly integrated along regional lines. Significant demographic uh, change in the uh, Dr. Prateep, uh, I just want to intervene here. When you're saying that uh, the regional uh, flavor, so yeah. you, you, do you talk about India only or do you talk about the- no, I'm talking about global. The global world, right. This, yeah. yeah. So you mean by 2030, we will have more of, uh, you know, regionalism also in our educational system. I think uh, in the NEP now, we are also focusing on regional language. Yeah, absolutely. It's not only Hindi or English, it's also the regional language. For example, in Maharashtra, it's Mar Marathi. In Gujarat, it will be Gujarati. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, yeah, you're right. This will also make a lot of impact. The learning and productivity will increase. Yes, please carry on. Yeah. Yes. So I was talking in 2030, world yeah. economies have become increasingly integrated along regional lines. So significant demographic changes in the 10 years between 2020 to 2030 have right. impacted countries and regions differently with developed nations uh, like US, we are developing, but in, but in de with developed nations challenged uh, by an aging workforce and tapering economic growth while de developing countries like India yeah. making up most of the world's working population in 2030 need to enable education and jobs for their uh, 
for reunion uh, populations. For each group, regional cooperation provides a way to support economic growth, achieve efficiencies, elevate under or over supply of human capital, which has become a critical strategic asset of the 21st century while maintaining unique cultural and uh, national identities. So this was the second scenario. Now yeah. third scenario is global giants. So this global free market environment has fostered the emergence of mega organizations with ubiquitous brand recognition and a scale to achieve significant efficiencies and industry power. So globalization, globalization has brought the world closer together in 2030. Yeah, absolutely. Through the integration of international trade, technology, investment, and human capital. Mm -hmm. So multilateral agreements and free market policies have removed barriers to international trade and stable geopolitical environment fosters global competition and growth. Yeah. Enabled by technology, there is an unprecedented interconnectedness amongst populations and the exchange of ideas and values amongst culture. Absolutely. Political activity. Political activity has lifted to the global level as intergovernmental organizations play a greater role in shaping international law, security, trade, and commerce. So this was the, the third scenario. And next is peer to peer. You know, this is very important. Peer to peer. Learning online through rich, personalized human to human experiences dominates the post secondary and skills training sectors. So, blockchain technology fundamentally reconfigures credentialing and unlocks the collective creativity and IP, intellectual property of teachers. So in 2030, the global peer-to-peer -peer economy has gone mainstream and is now an accepted way to live, work, learn, and earn. You know, powered by declining transaction costs and ubiquitous connectivity. So peer-to-peer -peer exchange of goods and services has meant the disintermediation of the institution in most industries. Rules governing the old economy where efficiencies were gained through standardization and economies of scale no longer apply. Consumer confidence, consumer confidence in major institutions is low and uh, decentralized network trades on trust and reliability. So, the, so this, this power shift from centralized to distributed models is underpinned by technology that supports trust-based and end-to-end uh, uh, -end transactions and changes in the role of citizens from consumers to producers and creators. So regulators in all industries have struggled to redefine their role in the peer-to-peer -peer economy as old regulatory frameworks have not been able to offer solutions presented by uh, you know, new peer-to-peer -peer business models. So by 2030, most professional and skills training occurs in the alternative accreditation space where peer market trading systems dominate and which are outside uh, the purview of traditional education regulators who focus their efforts on the former schooling sector. You know, and yeah. last scenario was robo-revolution. You know, yeah. AI, artificial intelligence, drives- yeah. In fact, artificial intelligence, we are seeing predominantly many schools and many institutions have already started working on them, you know, yeah, yeah. artificial intelligence, and then creating those. I mean, I'm not a technology person, but yeah, when I see those uh, creations, it looks so real. And in some parts of the world, they're actually teaching using, uh, what do you call those clones, uh, the yeah. cleaning and everything, you know, putting a teacher. So you have, for example, you, there's a Dr. Prateek and there's a Dr. Prateek in some other country, and it looks just the same. So I guess this technology is going to predominantly rule all over the globe now. 
like you're saying i mean it's not no longer going to be the old traditional i think we've already forgotten the old traditional ever since digital education has actually made a huge uh, you know it's, it's just come into our lives in a big big way so um what do you think about you were talking about artificial intelligence and its invasion so what do you uh, what more do you have to add to that this is artificial intelligence drives a complete reversal in who leads learning with virtual mm -hmm. tutors and mentors structuring learning pattern a paths providing assessment tasks giving feedback adjusting according to progress yeah. and organizing human tutoring when needed yeah so the advancement and applications of artificial intelligence have delivered significant economic benefits to most countries in the world by 2030 as labor inputs have slowed in advanced economies the importance of productivity in driving overall growth is now critical so countries with skills and labor shortages have have deployed artificial intelligence technologies deeply mm. into many industries automating right. routine tasks and uh, freeing human capital for more value to adding activities so the resulting uh, productivity gains from process automation and artificial you can say nowadays augmented labor force and increased yeah, consumer demand for ai enhanced products and services has contributed trillions of dollars to the global economy so artificial intelligence applications in education have automated aspects of teaching and administration and more complex human activities uh, are you can say augmented by artificial intelligence so increasingly artificial intelligence is managing the overall design of learning experiences and incorporating human intervention where required so learning models and curriculum are are you know nowadays changing as we identify which skills the world the world needs for the fourth industrial revolution so there yeah. are i would like to put forth there are tw top 20 skills abilities and knowledge you should know or every student should know wow. first is judgment and decision making yeah very, very important, important. second is fluency of ideas you know where, when you are uh, putting some ideas it should be crystal clear what you are saying so this is this is fluency of ideas then third is active learning fourth is learning strategies fifth very important is originality then systems and eva evaluation deductive reasoning complex problem solving system analysis monitoring critical thinking instructing education and training management of personal resources coordination inductive reasoning problem sensitivity information ordering active listening and uh, you can say administration and management so these are the 20 top skills every educator or every person should know nowadays i think uh, we also should add uh, the art of delegating and prioritizing yes yes one yes. if we don't know this what our priorities are i think we we become more messed up in our mind i our mind become goes for a toss but you know i was thinking for teaching all these skills um do, do you think teachers would be required uh, the actual teachers the human tutors would be required or do you think artificial uh, intelligence can handle all this because they they don't have uh, feelings you know i mean we have feelings so when we have to teach about speed reading or we have to teach about prioritizing or we have to teach about delegating or we have to teach about body language sense of humor and uh, what uh, what did you say like mental clarity uh, cognitive skills metacognitive skills so for all these things um i think somewhere the role of you and i as educators really comes into a play of course a little differently of course with the help of technology what do you say to that yeah i would like to say that automation is double threat to education you know training people for jobs 
uh, that will that will not exist and the automation of education services so you know education needs to ensure it is training people for the skills yeah. knowledge and jobs or uh, jobs of the future or mm -hmm. face redundancy as an industry automation could deliver huge productivity gains through enabling better data and decision making while the level of auto automation in education is far uh, from clear you know automation of simple computational tasks from structured data algorithm way uh, will be first uh, followed by a change to jobs that are routine and repeatable so this is what is known as augmentation way you know yeah. so finally i i would like to conclude with uh, this thought that an autonomy wave will deliver automation that incorporates problem solving in dynamic real world situations you know so that's the need of the hour i mean we need to be thinking we are faced with some kind of a challenge as a problem arises and we need to we need to have that mental clarity and we need to have those uh, quick decision making skills we cannot dilly dally we cannot beat about the bush because we'll lose opportunities if we do that let's just, uh, i mean you've given a very nice clear account you know from the beginning to the very end of talking about different skills and all that but um, if you had to actually choose i mean what skills do you think uh, need to be uh, uh, taught first what skills need to be enhanced first yeah first is uh, you know uh, decision making this is yeah. how it is very important decision making and uh, fluency of ideas mm. you know these are the okay dr prateek over here i'll ask you i mean uh, there was i just i'll uh, take an example from your life i mean can you just tell us about a big decision that you had to take recently all of a sudden you had to take this big decision how did you do it was it impromptu spontaneous or did you have to really uh, you know slog at it how when i when i when for your decision making skills then when i take any decision no uh, it was not spontaneous okay i need to study then i think yeah you are a researcher uh, you know you know as a scientist you are a researcher uh, my mind oh, my mind is developed that way you know yeah, i know <laughs> i know you are a scientist and a researcher you will have to look at research and you will have to see the proof yeah. i i will think about the repercussions the, yeah i know <laughs> you know everything <laughs> and then uh, i i come to know uh, okay now i i can take decision so that's yeah. the you know that's that's the way of my uh, style of taking decision yeah so also tell me something if um, how do you uh, you know we always talk of good interpersonal relationships so how do you maintain good working relationships with your colleagues what is that a uh, funda that you keep in mind you know so that there is no a uh, conflict and if there is conflict you know uh, how to resolve uh, uh, you know how to manage conflict how do you do that because that's also a huge skill and without yeah, yeah, skill you cannot uh, pr proceed in life so how how do you manage uh, my my funda is very simple i am very sincere to my work you know yeah. when you are very sincere dedicated to your work no no one will uh, argue with you <laughs> that's true you know, if you do your work very sincerely on time you know there are these are the things punctuality time management so if you achieve this mm. with clarity and transparency there is no conflict absolutely true and then what happens is you know when a person has everything in place time management sincerity passion mental clarity you have your uh, ideas and your concept very clear in your mind but then there are people who would want to control you yeah it's also a skill how not to be controlled by people because see if i am not able to express myself or do my work my way i will not be able to perform well i will feel depressed so how do you how do you you know and then then this negativity will come in so this is also a skill how do we keep control you know how do we train our mind to you know uh, be in control of situations what do you do dr prateek yeah in any situation first you should uh, think the situation 
what is that situation mm -hmm. and am i am i eligible or you can say am i uh, what i can say am i eligible to react or is it good for me to react on such a situation so these are the factors you know whenever a situation comes i generally think if this situation uh, is really uh, do, do i need to answer to uh, to particular uh, you know context or particular uh, conversation so i think yeah. that if if my uh, if my soul says yes i need to talk i need to stand then i definitely uh, put forth my views or i definitely stand for that purpose you know mm -hmm. but uh, but you know general uh, there are saying oh he he is say, saying that he is saying that so then <laughs> i will not involve in that uh, particular conversation yeah it's better to stay away no. from gossip and, and you should controversy not you should not be judgmental you know oh yes this is something sadly which dr prateek people forget they yeah. are so judgmental they put you on 90% people are judgmental yeah and that's where relationships you know good relationships and good working relationships go for a toss i wish people you know develop these skills and hopefully by 2030 we are able to actually insist as educators that you know these are the skills that will lead towards lifelong learning so before we end the show i want you to give everyone a powerful kryptonite message as an educator so a powerful kryptonite message from dr prateek yeah uh, my message is very simple don't <laughs> worry and be happy you know okay <laughs> <laughs> nowadays everyone is worrying worrying covid pandemic you know then job problems there yeah. people problems then so <laughs> i would like to say that don't worry and be happy is the first yeah. is the first step for to success nowadays <laughs> if you actually this is also a skill not worrying too much and try and very difficult you know whatever you difficult. have <laughs> yeah not worry is very difficult task very difficult <laughs> <laughs> you're yeah. right actually this is a very powerful message don't worry be happy and we listen to william farrell's song all the time you know i'm happy it's actually you know it's a state of mind you really need to train yourself to be happy with whatever you have and make the best of all the opportunities that come your way rather than worrying about what you don't have problem is that we worry about what we do not have and in that process we do not enjoy what we have yeah right it's word ho jati hai you know that's where that's why the importance of skills development is so important jab tak skills develop nahi hai till the time we don't know which skill to place more importance on how to manage our time well how to be passionate about what we're doing like you said very beautifully ye yeah, all these digitalization and automation and everything is important but at the same time we as human beings also need to realize our priorities in life and just be happy and not worry wow what a powerful message everyone uh, a big big thank you to you dr prateek for being on the kryptonite show um this was episode 7 and we had a wonderful time with you thank you so much for sharing and now you are a member of chill park international family and we will be having a lot of other events and you have to come and share your powerful kryptonite thoughts with all of us yes, yes thank you start with on the 2nd of april we have our express to de stress and um, you know that is our wellness drive we would like you to share your uh, you know de stress techniques for you know mental wellness because these days you know just like you said just now it's so important to keep your sanity intact it's so important to keep you know not only physically healthy but mentally healthy mentally healthy yes that is that is also a skill <laughs> by the way so thanks to your uh, sharing you know i've realized that everything in life you know whatever we are managing is all a kind of and a skill that we need to work and manage very well so once again dr prateek a big big thank you to you and it was wonderful having you and stay tuned everyone for the next episode of kryptonite Kryptonite season 1 episode 8 with yet another educational rockstar 
Thank you so much, Dr. Prateek. Thank you. Stay, happy, stay safe and stay blessed. And don't worry, be happy, everyone. Thanks to Thank Dr. Prateek Thank you. for this powerful kryptonite message. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.